What was National Road? National Road was the first federal road. Today, the path of the Great Westward Route is followed closely by U.S. Highway. 40 Congress authorized construction of the road in 1806 to answer the cry of settlers who demanded a better route across the Appalachians into the Ohio River Valley. Originally called Cumberland Road, work began in 1811 in Cumberland, Maryland. Progress was slow, the road did not reach present-day Wheeling. West Virginia, a distance of 130 miles, until six years later. But in 1830 President Andrew Jackson, 1767 to 1845, gave the project a boost when he signed. An act of Congress appropriating $130,000 to survey and extend the Cumberland Road. Westward. Jackson called it a national road, it was also called the Great National Pike. By the time the route was completed in 1852, it extended westward from Wheeling to cross Ohio. Indiana, and Illinois, where it ended at Vandalia, east of St. Louis. The project cost the government. More than $7 million to complete but accomplished what had been hoped. National roads spurred development in the Old Northwest, the present-day states of Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, and part of Minnesota, and the Far West, the territories west of the Mississippi River. The overland route was traversed in covered wagons and conestogas by pioneers and tradesmen. Large quantities of goods, including livestock, grain, and finished products were transported both east and west. Towns along the route boomed. By the end of the century, the road diminished in importance as settlers, new immigrants and goods were transported along the railroads that had begun to crisscross the nation in 1865. Nevertheless, the National Road heralded the future of federal transportation projects that would knit the nation together. How did the Republican Party begin? The Republican Party, one of the two principal political parties of the United States, was founded in 1854 by those opposing the extension of slavery into new territories. The party mustered enough support to elect their candidate in 1860, Abraham Lincoln, 1809-1865. During the 1880s party members nicknamed themselves the Grand Old Party. The vestige of this nickname is still around today, as the GOP. There have been 17 Republican presidents. Was Attila the Hun really a savage? While Attila, c. 406 to 453, may have possessed some of the worthwhile qualities of a military leader. The king of the Huns was no doubt a ruthless and fierce figure. He is believed to have ascended through the ranks of the Hun army. Coming to power as the leader of the nomadic group in 434, 
by this time, the Huns, who originated in Central Asia, had occupied the Volga River Valley in the area of present-day Western Russia. At first, like his predecessors, he was wholly occupied with fighting other barbarian tribes for control of lands. But under Attila's leadership, the Huns began to extend their power into Central Europe. He waged battles with the Eastern Roman armies, and after murdering his older brother and co-ruler Bilda in 445, went on to trample the countries of the Balkan Peninsula and northern Greece causing terrible destruction along the way. As Attila continued westward with his bloody campaigns, which each Hun fought using his own weapons and his own savage technique, he nearly destroyed the foundations of Christianity. But the combined armies of the Romans and the Visigoths defeated Attila and the Huns at Chalons. In northeastern France, in June 451, which is known as one of the most decisive battles of all time. From there, Attila and his men moved into Italy, devastating the countryside before Pope Leo I. C. 400 to 461, succeeded in persuading the brutal leader to spare Rome. For this and other reasons, Leo was later canonized, becoming Saint Leo. Attila died suddenly and of natural causes in 453. Just as he was again preparing to cross the Alps and invade Italy anew. Was the Mayan Empire the most advanced early civilization? In some regards, the Mayas were more advanced than other civilizations. Their development preceded that of the other agrarian civilizations in North and South America principally the Aztec and the Inca. The Mayas were an agricultural people who in about 1000 BC settled in southern Mexico and Central America. Their territory covered Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, Belize, much of Guatemala, and parts of Honduras and El Salvador. They developed a civilization that was highly advanced, not only did the Mayas produce remarkable architecture, including flat-topped pyramids, temples, and towers that are still visited by tourists today, and art, including sculpture, painting, and murals. But they developed their own writing system probably the first in the Western Hemisphere. They used this system to record time, astronomical events, their history, and religion, they believed in more than 160 gods. They also developed an advanced mathematics as well as a 365-day calendar, believed by some to be even more accurate than the Gregorian calendar in use today. At its peak, the Mayan population numbered some 14 million. Their history is divided into three periods. The pre-classic period began about the time they originated. Roughly 1000 BC, and extended into AD 300, this was the group's formative period. During the classic period, 300 to 900, Mayan culture spread throughout the area and city centers were developed at Copan, Honduras, Palenque, Uxmal. 
and Chichen Itza, Mexico, and Piedras Negras, Uaxactun, and Tikal, Guatemala. Scholars believe that Tikal was home to some 50,000 people and was not only a center for government. Education, economics, and science, but was also a spiritual mecca for the Maya. It was in the second half of the Classic period that the Maya made their greatest accomplishments in art and science. Europe would not produce a superior system of mathematics for centuries to come. During the post classic period, 900-1546, they were invaded by the Toltecs. However, the Maya absorbed these people rather than being conquered by them. Nevertheless, by the time the Spaniards arrived in the mid 1500s, the Mayan civilization was in decline. Some historians attribute this to widespread famine or disease while others believe the decline was due to a rebellion of the people against the harsh government. Though they were conquered by the Spaniards and became assimilated into the larger culture that developed in the region, Maya Indians still survive in Mexico and Central America today. What are the characteristics of Botticelli's paintings? The works of Sandro Botticelli, 1445-1510, one of the early painters of the Italian Renaissance, are known for their serene compositions, refined elegance, and spirituality. A student of Florentine painter Fra Filippo Lippi, 1406-1469. Botticelli refined Lippi's method of drawing such that he is considered one of the great masters of the line. Botticelli's work was soon eclipsed by that of Leonardo da Vinci, 1452-1519. Who was just a few years younger than he, but whose range of talents made Botticelli's work seem dated. Nevertheless, late in the 19th century, Botticelli began to be revered again by artists and critics alike, who hailed his works for their simplicity and sincerity. English art critic John Ruskin, 1819-1900, held Botticelli up as an example of an artist who presented nature as an expression of a divinely created world. Why was the development of the quantum theory important? German physicist and professor Max Planck, 1858-1947, originated and developed the quantum theory. From 1900, for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1918. The basic theory is that energy and some other physical properties can exist in tiny, finite amounts, called quanta. Before Planck's work, theories of classical physics held that energy and physical properties varied continuously. Planck experimented with black body radiation. A black body is any substance that absorbs all of the radiant energy that falls on it, reflecting none of it. He concluded that radiant energy can be divided and the particles, quanta, would have values proportional to those of the energy source. Planck determined the relationship between the amount of energy that light has and its frequency. 
along with Albert Einstein's 1897 to 1955 theory of relativity. The quantum theory forms the basis of modern physics. Since it was developed, the quantum theory has been applied to numerous processes involving the transfer of energy in an atomic or molecular scale, including in 1913 when it was used by Danish physicist and Nobel laureate, 1922, Niels Bohr, 1885-1962, to explain atomic structure. The theory has been used to explain how electrons move though the chips in a personal computer. The decay of nuclei, and how lasers work. When was the first movie shown? On March 22, 1895, the first in-theater showing of a motion picture took place in Paris. When the members of the Société d'Encouragement à l'Industrie Nationale, National Society for the Promotion of Industry, gathered to see a film of workers leaving the Lumiere factory at Lyons for their dinner hour. The cinematography of inventors Louis, 1864-1948, and Augusta, 1862-1954, Lumiere. Ages 31 and 33 respectively, was a vast improvement over the kinetoscope. Introduced in 1894 by Thomas Edison, whose film could only be viewed by one person at a time. The 16 frame per second mechanism developed by the Lumiere brothers became the standard for films for decades. The following year, on April 20, 1896, the first motion picture showing in the United States took place in New York. The film was shown using Thomas Edison's Vitascope, which was an improvement on his kinetoscope, and a projector made by Thomas Armat. How long have humans been producing art? The first true art was originated by Homo sapiens sapiens. Called man the double wise, in Europe about 35,000 years ago, during the Stone Age. Man the double wise painted his own handprints, warrior images, and animals. Including bison, horses, and reindeer, on the walls and ceilings of uninhabited caves. In France and Spain between 35,000 BC and 8,000 BC. He used red, black, and yellow paints which were made by mixing powdered earth and rock pigments with water. Among the most famous paintings are those in the caves at Lascaux, in Dordogne, France, Nio, Erige, France, Peck Merle, Lot, France, Gajola, Castellan, Spain, and Altamira, Cantabria, Spain. These early modern humans who, if dressed in contemporary clothing, would be nearly indistinguishable from anyone on a modern city street also decorated tools and created lifelike sculptures of animals and women. European man of this period, who had a fully developed human brain, is also referred to as Cro-Magnon Man for a shallow rock shelter near Laisies in the Dordogne region of southwestern France. Where, in 1868, skeletal remains of the tall, 
erect walking species were found. Why did President Lincoln issue the Emancipation Proclamation before the end of the Civil War? As the war raged between the Confederacy and the Union, it looked like victory would be a long time in the making. In the summer of 1862 things seemed grim for the Federal troops when they were defeated at the Second Battle of Bull Run, which took place in northeastern Virginia on August 29-30. But on September 17, with the Battle of Antietam, in Maryland, the Union finally forced the Confederates to withdraw across the Potomac into Virginia. That September day was the bloodiest of the war. President Abraham Lincoln, 1809-1865, decided that this withdrawal was success enough for him to make his proclamation. And on September 22, he called a cabinet meeting. That day he presented to his advisors the preliminary Emancipation Proclamation. The official Emancipation Proclamation was issued later. On January 1, 1863. This final version differed from the preliminary one in that it specified emancipation was to be effected only in those states that were in rebellion, i.e. the South. This key change had been made because the President's proclamation was based on congressional acts giving him authority to confiscate rebel property and forbidding the military from returning slaves of rebels to their owners. Abolitionists in the North criticized the president for limiting the scope of the edict to those states in rebellion, for it left open the question of how slaves and slave owners in the loyal, northern, states should be dealt with. Nevertheless, Lincoln had made a stand, which served to change the scope of the Civil War, 1861-65, to a war against slavery. On January 31, 1865, just over two years after the Emancipation Proclamation, Congress passed the 13th Amendment, banning slavery throughout the United States. Lincoln, who had lobbied hard for this amendment, was pleased with its passage. The Confederate states did not free their four million slaves. Until after the Union was victorious, on April 9, 1865. What was the impact of the Hundred Years' War? After waging war with each other for more than a century. In 1453, both England and France emerged as stronger, centralized governments. As the governments had gained strength, the nobility in both countries found themselves with less power and influence than they had enjoyed previously, and the system of feudalism, which before the war had been necessary in the absence of a larger, protective entity, was on the decline. In their strategies against each other, both countries had developed new military tactics. And though England had fewer resources than did France, it still managed to assert itself at sea, marking the beginning of that country's naval prowess.
What impact did the Crusades have on Western Europe? The goals of the Crusades were not accomplished. The Holy Land had been recovered, but Christians were unable to keep control of it. And while the Western Europeans had joined with the Eastern, Byzantine, Christians in their fight against the Muslims. The two groups remained bitter toward each other, which likely contributed to the fall of Byzantium to the Ottoman Turks in 1453. Nevertheless, the Crusades had a lasting effect on the European economy. During the expeditions, trade routes were established, new markets opened, and shipbuilding was improved. Having fortified themselves for the fight, the Christian monarchies in Western Europe emerged from the Crusades in 1291 as strong as if not stronger than before Pope Urban had first rallied the troops in 1095. How old is Islam? Islam one of the world's largest religions, originated with the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, c. 570-632, during the early 600s. Muhammad was born in Mecca. In present-day Saudi Arabia, and was orphaned at the age of six. He was raised by relatives, who trained him as a merchant. When he was 25 years old he married a wealthy widow, Kadia, who bore him several children. In about 610, Muhammad began having visions in which he was called upon by God, Allah. More than 600 of these visions were written down, becoming the sacred text known as the Quran, or Quran. By 613 Muhammad had attracted followers with his messages of one God, Allah's power. The duty of worship and generosity, and the doctrine of the last judgment. Followers of this new religion became known as Muslims, an Arabic word meaning those who submit. To Allah, and the religion itself became known as Islam, meaning submission. Today, there are Muslims in every part of the world, but the largest Muslim communities are in the Middle East. North Africa, Indonesia, Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, and Central Asia. Additionally, most of the people of Turkey and Albania are Muslim. It is the world's second largest religion, after Christianity. When did MTV first air? Music Television, MTV, made its debut August 1, 1981. When it was made available to 2.1 million cable subscribing households in the United States. The format was all music, 24 hours a day. Audiences could tune in any time to watch popular rock artists performing hit songs. The notion of pairing music with video was not without precedent. The most obvious of which is the Beatles 1964 critically acclaimed pseudo-documentary, A Hard Day's Night. What was new was the idea of airing music videos around the clock. 
MTV was the brainchild of John Lack, vice president of Warner Amex Satellite Entertainment, which owned the cable station Nickelodeon. He'd take an interest in the Nickelodeon program Pop Clips. A music and video show developed by Michael Nesmith, a former member of the pop group The Monkees. Lack thought the format had potential, and soon a young executive. Robert Pittman, just 27 years old, was given charge of the project. MTV was launched with 13 advertisers and a meager library of only 125 videos. All provided by the record labels. But MTV caught on, and by 1984 it had captured an audience of more than 24 million viewers. Was showing a profit, and was soon spun off into a separate company by parent company Warner. The video Colossus thrived during the 1980s, helping launch more than a few music careers. However, in the following decade VJs, video jockeys had to make way for alternate programming on the music channel in order to keep audiences interested. In addition to the standard video programs, including theme shows such as Yo! MTV Raps, the cable channel broadened its offerings to include specials. MTV Spring Break and MTV Video Music Awards, as well as series such as Real World, Road Rules, and The Osbournes. All of the new programming was aimed at the Generation X audience the very group of teens and 20-somethings who in the 1990s, couldn't remember not watching MTV. Even though its audience was estimated to have declined by more than half since its peak. MTV remained a going and profitable concern into the 2000s. As advertisers continued to rely on the medium to reach the youth market. What were the Punic Wars? The Punic Wars were three major campaigns that Rome waged to expand its empire. Messina, a present-day province of Sicily, Italy, was the site of the First Punic War, which began in 264 BC when warring factions in the trade and transportation center called for assistance from both Carthage and Rome. The Carthaginians arrived first and secured the city. But the Romans, who had girded their navy for the battle, arrived and drove the Carthaginians out. 241 BC, conquering Sicily. Messina became a free city but was allied with Rome. The rivalry between Rome and Carthage did not end there, the Second Punic War. 218 to 201 BC, was largely fought over control of Spain. When the great Carthaginian general Hannibal, 247 to 183 BC, captured the Roman allied city of Sagunta. Spain, in 218, he then crossed the Alps and invaded Italy, where he was met by and defeated the Roman armies. The deciding battle in the Second Punic War was fought in the North African town of Zama. Southwest of Carthage, in 202 BC. It was there that the Romans under General Scipio Africanus. 236-183 BC, crushed the Carthaginians under Hannibal. 
Rome exacted payments from Carthage, and Carthage was also forced to surrender its claims. In Spain In 201 BC the two powers signed a peace treaty, which held for five decades. The Third Punic War erupted in 149 BC when the Carthaginians rebelled against Roman rule. By 146 BC Carthage, which had been richer and more powerful than Rome when the Punic Wars began, was completely destroyed in this third and final conflict with the Roman army. Who are the Leakies? The prominent British family has included four scientists who have made significant anthropological findings in East Africa. Family patriarch Louis S. B. Leakey, 1903-1972, was born near Nairobi, Kenya. The oldest child of British missionaries. There he grew up, learning the tribal language of the Kikuyu people before he learned English and wandering the countryside. Where he discovered primitive stone arrowheads and tools. While attending Cambridge University, Leakey determined that he would pursue a career in archaeology. And he went on to earn his doctorate degree. Louis Leakey married archaeologist and artist Mary Douglas, 1913-1996, in 1936. Returning to Leakey's boyhood home to conduct their work. The husband and wife team made their first discovery of note in 1948, near Lake Victoria, Kenya, they found more than 30 fragments of the skull of an ape-like creature. Scientists concluded that the animal was a common ancestor of humankind and apes and had lived between 25 and 40 million years ago. The Leakeys made their most well-known discoveries in neighboring Tanzania during the late 1950s and into the 1960s. Proving that human evolution was centered in Africa. At the Old Ove Gorge, a 35-mile long ravine, the archaeologists discovered layers of Earth's history. Including almost 100 forms of extinct animal life. They also unearthed the fossils of a near man, Zinjanthropus, who possessed a brain about half the size of the modern human and who walked upright at a height of about 5 feet, roughly 1.75 million years ago. Because he lived on a diet of nuts and meat, the discovery came to be called Nutcracker Man. Subsequent findings at the gorge included that of Homo habilis, called Abel Man. Since it is believed that he made use of the stone tools found nearby. Louis Leakey later decided the two human-like creatures, Abel Man and Nutcracker Man, had actually lived in the same place at the same time meaning that the Evolution of humankind was not along the linear path that had been thought. While Leakey's controversial conclusion challenged the scientific community. So would the finds of their scientist son Richard, 1944- in the decades that followed his parents' discoveries at Old Duve Gorge. Richard pursued his own projects at Lake Turkana in north-central Kenya. There Richard discovered more than 200 early man fossils. Like his father, Richard Leakey is part of a husband and wife team of scientists. In 1971 he married British-born Meeve Epps, 
1942. A zoologist and paleontologist who had been hired by Louis Leakey in 1965 to work on his African digs. Together Richard and Meve Leakey, along with American anthropologist Alan Walker, have discovered and identified some of the oldest known human-like fossils. In 1994 and 1995, near Lake Turkana, the team found prehistoric fossils. Identified as Australopithecus anamnesis, human-like creatures that lived about 4 million years ago. What was trial by battle? Like trial by ordeal. Trial by battle was a method of justice used predominantly during the Middle Ages, 500-1350. When noblemen had disputes, they would engage in a duel with one other. The assumption was that the person who was in the right would have God on his side. And he would emerge the victor in combat. No questions asked. This form of trial was gradually replaced by trial by jury. When did the American cattle industry begin? As a large-scale commercial endeavor. The beef industry had its beginnings in the decades following the American Civil War, 1861-65. Longhorn cattle, a breed of cattle descended from cows and bulls left by early. Spanish settlers in the American Southwest, spurred the growth of the industry. Named for their long horns, which span about four feet, by the 1860s they had multiplied and great numbers of them roamed freely across the open range of the West. Ranchers in Texas bred the Longhorns with other cattle breeds such as Hereford and Angus to produce quality meat. With beef in demand in the eastern United States. Shrewd businessmen capitalized on the business opportunity, buying cattle for $3 to $5 a head and selling them in eastern and northern markets for as much as $25 to $60 a head. Ranchers hired cowboys to round up, sort out, and drive their herds to railheads in places like Abilene and Dodge City, Kansas, which became famous as cow towns. Raucous boom towns where saloons and brothels proliferated. After the long trail drive, the cattle were loaded onto rail cars and shipped. Live to local butchers who slaughtered the livestock and prepared the beef. For a 20-year period the plentiful Longhorn cattle sustained a booming livestock industry in the West. At least 6 million Texas Longhorns were driven across Oklahoma to the cow towns of Kansas. By 1890 the complexion of the industry changed. Farmers and ranchers in the West used a new material, barbed wire, to fence in their lands. Closing the open range, railroads were extended, bringing an end to the long, hard, and much glorified cattle drives, the role of the cowboy changed, making him little more than a hired hand, and big business took over the industry.
Among the entrepreneurs who capitalized on beef's place in the American diet was New England-born Gustavus Swift. 1839-1903, who in 1877 began a large-scale slaughterhouse operation in Chicago. Shipping ready-packed meat via refrigerated railcars to markets in the East. Who was the first woman in space? The Soviets claim the distinction of putting the first woman into space. On June 16, 1963, cosmonaut Valentina Tereshkova Nikolava, 1937, was launched into space aboard the Vostok 6. She spent three days circling Earth. It was 20 years before the United States would match the accomplishment. On June 18, 1983, Sally K. Ride, 1951, and four other crew members were launched into space aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger. Ride remained with the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. NASA, for four years after completing the mission. She served on the Presidential Commission that investigated the 1986 Challenger disaster. When did the American suffragist movement begin? In the 1840s American women began organizing and, in increasing numbers, demanding the right to vote. The movement was started by women who sought social reforms, including outlawing slavery, instituting a national policy of temperance, abstinence from alcoholic beverages, and securing better work opportunities and pay. These reformers soon realized that in order to make change they needed the power of the vote. Among the leaders of the suffragist movement was feminist and reformer Elizabeth Cady Stanton, 1815-1902. She joined with anti-slavery activist Lucretia Mott, 1793-1880, to organize the first women's. Rights Convention in 1848 in Seneca Falls, New York, launching the woman suffragist movement. In 1869 Stanton teamed with Susan B. Anthony, 1820-1906, to organize the National Woman Suffrage Association. That same year, another group was formed, the American Woman Suffrage Association. Led by women's rights and anti-slavery activist Lucy Stone, 1818-1893, and her husband Henry Brown Blackwell, 1825-1909. In 1870 the common cause of the two groups was strengthened by the passage of the 15th Amendment. Which gave all men, regardless of race, the right to vote. When the two organizations joined forces in 1890, they formed the National American Woman Suffrage Association, NASA. The founders of the American women's movement were followed by a new generation of leaders, which included Stanton's daughter, Harriet Eaton Blatch, 1856-1940, as well as Alice Paul. 1885-1977, who founded the organization that became the National Woman's Party. An organizer and editor Lucy Burns, 1879-1966, who worked closely with Paul. 
The suffragists appealed to middle class and working class women, as well as to students and radicals. They waged campaigns at the state level, distributed literature, organized meetings, made speeches, and marched in parades. They also lobbied federal legislators, picketed, and chained themselves to the White House fence. When jailed, many resorted to hunger strikes and were sometimes met with cruel treatment. The suffragists' fight was a fierce one, the opposition played on the widespread belief that if given the right to vote, women would neglect the traditional duties of wife and mother. The movement gained strength during World War I, 1914-18. As men went off to fight the war in Europe, the women at home demonstrated themselves to be intelligent and involved citizens in the life of the country. A wartime suffragist poster declared in one long column, as a war measure. The country is asking of women service as, farmers, mechanics, nurses, doctors, munitions workers, mine workers, yeomen, gas makers, bellboys, messengers, conductors, motormen, army cooks, telegraphers, ambulance drivers, advisors to the Council of National Defense, and in another short column it stated, as a war measure. Women are asking of the country, the vote. By 1918 support for women's suffrage was broad. That year Congress proposed a constitutional amendment stating that the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. It was passed, as the proposed 19th Amendment. In the House in 1918 and in the Senate in 1919. The amendment was approved by the required number of state legislatures on August 18, 1920, when Tennessee ratified it. What is the classical age? The classical age refers to the ancient Roman and Greek worlds, roughly 2000 B. C to AD 500. The classical age followed the prehistoric era and preceded the Middle Ages. During this period, the ancient Greeks and Romans made contributions to literature, philosophy, science, the arts, and letters that are still relevant today. What is the plague? The plague is a general term that refers to any contagious epidemic disease. But usually refers specifically to bubonic plague, which gets its name from the swelling of the lymph nodes, or buboes. A bubonic plague epidemic spread throughout Europe and Asia in the middle of the 14th century. Killing as much as 75% of the population in 20 years, that epidemic came to be known as the Black Death. An acute infectious disease. The bubonic plague is carried to humans by fleas that have bitten infected rats and other rodents. Human symptoms include high fever, chills, swelling of the lymph nodes, and hemorrhages. Once the bacteria spreads to the lungs, it is quickly fatal. This form of the disease is called pneumonic plague. 
and can be transmitted from person to person via droplets. Improved sanitation, chiefly in developed nations, has reduced the occurrence of the disease. Bubonic plague still occurs, but the development of antibiotics in the 20th century has greatly reduced the mortality rate. When was the Berlin Wall dismantled? The barrier wall surrounding West Berlin began coming down in November 1989. As a wave of democratization swept Europe, the concrete, electrically fortified wall was first. Built in 1961 as a barbed wire and cinder block structure. Communist East German leader Walter Ulbricht, 1893 to 1973 convinced Soviet premier Nikita Khrushchev 1894 to 1971 that the wall was needed to prevent people from fleeing communist eastern europe before the wall was erected an estimated 2.5 million people had fled to the free world through west berlin after its completion Perhaps 5,000 managed to escape. Hundreds died trying. When the wall was complete, it had an average height of 12 feet and ran more than 100 miles, along which there were posts where armed East German guards stood sentinel. Preventing their countrymen from escaping to the west. The wall completely. Surrounded West Berlin and divided the German capital between East and West, Communism, and the Free World. The wall was a symbol of Communism's oppression and of the Cold War. On June 26, 1963, President John F. Kennedy delivered his memorable I Am a Berliner speech in its shadows, saying, there are some who say communism is the wave of the future, let them come to Berlin. He went on to say that. The wall was a vivid demonstration of the failure of the communist system. And that though democracy is not perfect, democratic nations had never had to put up a wall to keep our people in. On June 12, 1987, President Ronald Reagan, 1911 to 2004, addressed West Berliners at the Wall's Brandenburg Gate. His now famous speech was audible on the East Berlin side of the Wall as well. There, Reagan issued a challenge to Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev, 1931, saying if you seek peace, if you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, come here to this wall, Mr. Gorbachev. Tear down this wall. East Germany's communist government was finally toppled in. October 1989. On November 9th restrictions between the two Berlins were lifted, and the wall was opened. The resulting celebration brought the wall down. With gleeful Berliners chipping away at the barrier, it was gradually dismantled. By 2005 only a few sections of the wall and some watchtowers still existed the capital no longer divided, the country a unified, democratic Germany. How many died in the September 11th attacks?
about 3,000 people died that day as a result of the terrorist attacks on the United States. The strikes on New York's World Trade Center claim 2,602 lives. And another 125 died at the Pentagon, outside Washington, D.C. The numbers include firefighters and police officers who died as part of the rescue effort. The victims on board the hijacked flights, which were used as terrorist weapons. Numbered an additional 87 on American Airlines Flight 11, which crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. 60 on United Airlines Flight 175, which crashed into the South Tower of the World Trade Center. 59 on American Airlines Flight 77, which slammed into the Pentagon. And 40 on United Airlines Flight 93, which crashed in rural Shanksville, Pennsylvania. In February 2005 officials announced that they had exhausted all possible methods of identifying the human remains recovered at Ground Zero. Of the 2,749 people reported missing at the World Trade Center, positive identification had been made on 1,161 people. The rest were presumed dead, 2,749 death certificates were issued related to the World Trade Center attack. What was the My Lai Massacre? It was a horrific chapter in American military history, during which you S troops fighting in South Vietnam took the small village of My Lai on March 16, 1968. The incident did not come to light until more than a year later, after which time it became clear that the unit of 105 soldiers who entered my lie that morning had faced no opposition from the villagers. Even so, at the end of the day as many as 500 civilians, including women and children, lay dead. Though charges were brought against some of the men, only the commander of the company. Lieutenant William Calley, was convicted. His sentence of life imprisonment for the murder of at least 22 people was later reduced to 20 years, and he was released on full parole in November 1974. What was the Bataan Death March? It was one of the most brutal chapters of World War II, 1939-45. On April 9, 1942, American forces on the Bataan Peninsula, Philippines, surrendered to the Japanese. More than 75,000 American and Filipino troops became prisoners of war, POWs. On April 10, they were forced to begin a 65-mile march to a POW camp. Conditions were torturous high temperatures, meager provisions, and gross maltreatment. The troops were denied food and water for days at a time, they were not allowed to rest in the shade. They were indiscriminately beaten, and those who fell behind were killed. On stretches where some troops were transported by train. The boxcars were packed so tightly that many POWs died of suffocation. The forced march lasted more than a week. 
20,000 men died along the way. But the end of the march was not the end of the horrors for the surviving POWs. About 56,000 men were held until the end of the war. They endured starvation, torture, and horrific cruelties. Some were forced to work as slave laborers in Japanese industrial plants and some became subjects of medical experiments. In August 1945 their POW camp was liberated by the Allied forces, and the surviving troops were put on. U.S. Navy vessels for the trip home. As part of the United States 1951 peace treaty with Japan. Surviving POWs were barred from seeking reparations from Japanese firms that had benefited from their slave labor. This injustice continued to be the subject of proposed congressional legislation into the early 2000s. With no positive outcome for the veterans as of 2005. What does Jungian mean? Jungian refers to the analytical psychology founded by Swiss psychiatrist Carl Gustav Jung, 1875-1961. Early in his career Jung conducted experiments in mental association and through this work came into Contact with famed psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud, 1856-1939, in 1907, while initially in harmony with each other. Jung later broke with Freud's theories, establishing his own doctrines of human behavior. Like Freud, Jung believed that the unconscious that part of the mind of which a person is unaware, affects human behavior. But unlike his Austrian colleague, Jung denied that neuroses have any sexual basis. Instead, Jung believed that many factors influence human behavior, including the personalities of one's parents. He also believed in something he described as the collective unconscious. In his revolutionary work Psychology of the Unconscious Published in 1912, Jung asserted that there are two dimensions of the unconscious, the personal and the collective. The collective unconscious, according to Jung, is made up of those acts and mental patterns that are shared by members of a culture or are perhaps universally shared by all humankind. He theorized that the collective unconscious manifests itself in archetypes images, patterns, and symbols that appear in dreams and fantasies as well as in mythology, religion, and literature. Jung believed that the collective unconsciousness can serve as a guide to humanity and therefore, he taught that therapy should make people aware of it. Jung's theories of archetypes, or universal symbols, have influenced such diverse fields as anthropology, art, filmmaking, and history. Jung later developed a system for classifying personalities into introverted and extroverted types, and distinguishing among mental functions, classifying them as thinking, feeling, sensing, or intuitive. Jung taught that therapists should help their patients balance introversion, relying only on oneself for personal fulfillment, with extroversion, relying on others for personal fulfillment. Jung's system of classifications, or typology, 
has been used to develop theories of personality types and their influences on human behavior. What was the nonviolent Indian reform movement? It was the movement led by Indian nationalist leader Mohandas Gandhi, 1869-1948, whose methods of protest included staging boycotts, fasting, conducting prayer vigils, and visiting troubled areas in an attempt to end conflicts. Gandhi, whom the people called Mahatma, meaning great souled was determined to bring about change in India to bring an end to British control of the country and to topple the ages-old caste system, the strict social structure, there. Gandhi believed that it took great courage to not engage in violence and he began campaigns of passive resistance, which he called Satyagraha, meaning firmness in truth. Gaining a wide following, Gandhi's acts of civil disobedience did bring about changes in his homeland, where he is revered as the founder of an independent India, 1947. He remained faithful to his nonviolent beliefs throughout his life. He also adhered to a firm policy of religious tolerance. It was for this reason that the spiritual and nationalist leader was killed by a Hindu extremist in 1948. Why was the battle at Gettysburg important? The 1863 battle, fought when the two sides met accidentally in the southern Pennsylvania town, was a turning point in the Civil War. From July 1st to 3 General George Meade, 1815 to 1872, led his troops, about 90,000 strong, to defeat the advancing Confederate troops numbering some 75,000, under General Robert E. Lee. 1807-1870, the Union win effectively stopped Lee's invasion of the North. The following November 19, President Abraham Lincoln, 1809-1865, made the historical address at Gettysburg. As he dedicated part of the battlefield as a national cemetery. Beginning with the now famous words four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation. Conceived in liberty, and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. The short speech, which Lincoln rewrote many times closed by issuing a rallying cry for the nation as a whole, saying, We here highly resolve that the dead shall not have died in vain that the nation shall, under God, have a new birth of freedom and that governments of the people by the people, and for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Who started the Boston Tea Party? Many believe that on December 13, 1773, it was Patriot Samuel Adams, 1722-1803, who gave the signal to the men. Who may have numbered more than 100 and were dressed as Indians to board the ships in Boston Harbor and dump the tea overboard. 
whether or not it was Adams who started the Tea Party. About this there can be no doubt, he was most certainly a leader in the agitation that led up to the event. The show of resistance was in response to the recent passage by the British Parliament of the Tea Act, which allowed the British-owned East India Company to dump tea on the American colonies at a low price and also required that the colonists pay a duty for said tea. Colonists feared the act would put local merchants out of business and that if they conceded to pay the duty to the British, they would soon be required to pay other taxes as well. Once the ships carrying the tea had arrived in Boston Harbor, the colonists tried to have them sent back to England. But when Governor Thomas Hutchinson, 1711-1780, of Massachusetts refused to order the return of the ships, Patriots organized their show of resistance, which came to be known as the Boston Tea Party. What is international law? As interpreted by Dutch jurist and humanist Hugo Grotius, 1583-1645 Natural law prescribes the rules of conduct among nations, resulting in international laws. His 1625 work, titled Concerning the Law of War and Peace, is considered the definitive text on international law. Asserting the sovereignty and legal equality of all states of the world. But the notion also had its detractors, English philosopher Thomas Hobbes, 1588-1679, among them. Hobbes insisted that since international law is not enforced by any legal body above the nations themselves, it is not legitimate. Since the 17th century, however, international law has evolved to become more than just theory. During the 1800s and early 1900s, the Geneva Conventions 1864, 1906, 1929, 1949, and the Hague Conferences, 1899, 1907, set forth the rules of war. Today, treaties, between two or among many countries, customary laws, legal writings, and conventions all influence international law which is also referred to as the law of nations. Further, it is enforced by the International Court of Justice. A United Nations body, as well as by world opinion, international sanctions. And the intervention of the United Nations, apart from the International Court of Justice. When did diamond mining begin in Africa? An 1867 discovery of a pretty pebble along the banks of the Orange River in South Africa led to the finding of a rich diamond field near present-day Kimberley. The city was founded as a result of the mining, in 1871. Similar to the California Gold Rush roughly a decade and a half earlier. The finding in central South Africa prompted people from Britain and other countries to flock to the area. However, the ultimate outcome was conflict, since both the British and the Boers. 
who were Dutch descendants living in South Africa, claimed the Kimberley area, the First Boer War ensued in 1880. What is a Poet Laureate? A Poet Laureate is someone who is recognized by his or her country or state as its most eminent and representative poet. Officially, a Poet Laureate is appointed or named by the government. England's first, if unofficially titled. Poet Laureate was Ben Johnson, 1572-1637, a contemporary of Shakespeare. Shakespeare acted a leading role in the first of Johnson's great plays. Every Man in His Humor, 1598. In 1605 Johnson began writing a series of masks, short allegorical dramas that were performed by actors wearing masks for the court years later in 1616 he was appointed poet laureate and in that capacity received a substantial pension among johnson's works are volpone 1605 works a collection of poetry published in 1616 and which includes the oft-quoted line Drink to me only with thine eyes, and pleasure reconciled to virtue, 1618 Some sources trace the first British poet laureate back to Edmund Spencer 1552 or 1553 to 1599, who is called the poet's poet However, the title of Poet Laureate was not officially conferred on an English writer until 1638, when poet and dramatist William Davenant, 1606-1668, who was reputed to be the godson or even the illegitimate son of Shakespeare, was given the honor. Other Poet Laureates of England include John Dryden, 1631 to 1700 William Wordsworth 1770 to 1850 and Lord Alfred Tennyson 1809 to 1892